Questions? Questions? And we now proceed to statement from the Leader of the House, Penny Mordaunt. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. With permission, I will make a short business statement about an addition to this week's business. Following the announcement by my right honourable friend, the Home Secretary, that the Government intends to prescribe Hizbut Tahrir under the Terrorism Act 2000, the business on Thursday, the 18th of January, will now be business on a motion to approve the Draft Terrorism Act 2000 Prescribed Organisations Amendment Order 2024, followed by a debate on a motion on the loan charge, followed by a debate on a motion on HS2 compensation. The subjects for these debates were determined by the Backbench Business Committee. I will announce further business in the usual way on Thursday. Leader of the House, Lucy Powell. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Can I thank the Leader for updating the House business and for advance uh, side of it? It's good to see the Leader announcing a change in business as a statement rather than a point of order, and I know members will appreciate this proper approach. Um, there have long been serious concerns about the activities of Hitzbut Tahir, which have been exacerbated in the light of Hamas's barbaric terrorist attack on Israel on the 7th of October. It is right that the Government has looked at the evidence and intelligence on the threat posed by this group, and we support the decision to prescribe them. I also welcome that urgent time has been found to debate the order this week. Those who incite violence and promote or glorify terror terrorism have no place on Britain's streets. In that context, can I also ask what progress has been made in prescribing the IRGC? either via an SI, as they're using this week for his book to hear, or by a new process to deal with hostile state actors, for which there is wide cross-party support in this House. Finally, Madam Deputy Speaker, I have to say, when I was first notified of emergency business statement today, I did wonder if the Government was having a rethink about its Rwanda bill in the face of the usual infighting and chaos. Can she take this opportunity to confirm that whether the bill is or indeed isn't amended at committee stage today or tomorrow, there will still be, as programmed, third reading at the end of tomorrow's business. There has been some suggestion that the government may still table their own amendments and push back third reading to another day. Wouldn't this be further proof of the Prime Minister's weakness and the fact that when it comes to governing, they're just making it up as they go along? Yeah. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, well, I first of all thank the Honourable Lady for her support uh, for the SI that we are bringing forward. Uh, it, the, the Home Office have uh, taken their time to consider this, but they are very clear that uh, the activities they are involved in uh, fall into that category and uh, they need to be dealt with swiftly, which is why we have brought uh, this SI forward at the first available opportunity. She will know that uh, she talks about uh, the point of order I gave last week, she will fully appreciate this is a different situation. I am making a business statement today because we are changing the business that was previously announced. Last week I was simply giving members advanced notice of forthcoming business because if I had waited until our exchanges on Thursday, it would have meant uh, an unsatisfactory amount of time for uh, honourable members and right honourable members to prepare uh, amendments. I will certainly make sure that the Home Secretary has heard uh, her query with regard to the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps. Their activities are uh, not restricted just to what is happening overseas. They are engaged in activities on British soil uh, against British citizens. And I know that all, from all sides of this House there is a great deal of interest uh, in that. I shall make sure uh, that uh, the Home Secretary has heard her, uh, and she will know that uh, progress of the Rwanda Bill is subject um, to this House, and I shall make uh, further business announcements in the usual way. Uh, Mark Francois. Thank you, uh, Dame Rosie. As a member of the Defence Committee, it is an open secret that Iran is paymaster and helps to train Hamas, Hezbollah and the Houthi rebels in Yemen. There is no doubt about that across the international intelligence community. I warmly welcome the decision to prescribe his bateria. 
Given what I have just said and given the action we've taken against the Houthi rebels to maintain freedom of navigation on the seas, can the Leader of the House foresee any circumstances which you can come back to the House in the near future and make a similar announcement about prescribing the IRGC? Well, I thank the uh, Honourable Gentleman for his very helpful intervention. I know that this is an issue of great concern to many members in this House. He will appreciate that the Home Secretary and the Government will want to uh, make any future announcements in a, uh, in a timely way, uh, but also considering uh, all the effects such a, such a course of action might uh, bring about, uh, not least to our shipping and their insurance. Uh, but I thank the Honourable Gentleman. I shall make sure the Home Secretary has heard what he has said. SNP spokesperson? No? Okay. Uh, Kevin Brennan. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Given that the Chair of the Backbench uh, Committee isn't present and that the announcement has an impact on backbench business on Thursday, could she give the House any information in relation to the timing of this debate, whether there will be a timetable motion, as there would be if it was taken in a committee upstairs, probably of an hour and a half, under normal circumstances. Will that apply on the floor of the House? And, and why has she chosen to do this on the floor of the House rather than upstairs in committee? Um, well, I thank the Honourable Gentleman and apologies to the Backbench Business Committee. I know this, is, this will eat into their time uh, on Thursday, but it is an important matter that we wanted to uh, deal with swiftly. And it is because of that that we felt it was appropriate to do it on the floor of the House. Martin Doherty Hughes. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, let me thank for the Leader of the House for the statement and, and welcome their intention for Thursday. But following the, my honourable, right honourable friend, the Member for Raleigh and Whitford, as a fellow member of the Defence Select Committee, the uh, Leader of the House said that the Home Secretary would come back timely. Uh, and as my honourable friend ha had highlighted, uh, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard is a supplier of the Houthis, especially in drone material and also was committing um, uh, international action last night in northern Iraq. So rather than a timely way, there are many of us in committee would say, time's up. And I'm wondering if the Leader of the House can reinforce to the Home Secretary that across the House there is a clamour for a call to prescribe the IRG at the soonest opportunity. Well, again, I thank the Honourable Gentleman for his helpful intervention. I will make sure that the Home Secretary has heard what he has said. The actions of this organisation that he describes are not new. I think, on average, they have been uh, behind uh, about 500 attacks uh, over uh, the course of uh, any recent year against international uh, shipping and people are going about their daily business. And as I have said before, uh, they are also engaged in activities uh, in the UK. He will know, sitting on that committee, uh, some of the issues that surround this decision, uh, and I'm sure that uh, if and when the Home Secretary makes a decision, he will want the House to be alerted at the earliest opportunity. Uh, Jim Shannon. Mr. Speaker, I welcome the Leader of the House's uh, statement and clarification for business on Thursday. Uh, the, the Leader of the House will be aware of the high levels of terrorism and severe threat to people in Northern Ireland through the real IRA and new IRA. The, um, connection between uh, terrorist IRA terrorist groups in Northern Ireland and those who have sympathy towards the Hamas terrorists. Uh, it's wonderful how terrorists across the world come together with the, to murder innocent people. Uh, when it comes to the statement on Thursday, can I ask the Leader of the House, will it be possible to indicate, ever mindful there are only certain things can be said in the House, uh, ever mindful that, that it might be possible to indicate whether the threat of real IRA, the connection with the, the Hamas group that is be, to be prescribed, can be clarified, and if so, evidentially, uh, what steps will be taken to reinforce the, hard, the step hard down upon real IRA and new IRA in Northern Ireland? Well, can I thank the Honourable Gentleman um, for raising that important matter, which again I shall make sure that the Home Secretary has heard. He will know that is not a matter for me with regard to uh, the business of this House, uh, but he has uh, characteristically uh, made the point he, he wishes uh, and got that on the record, and I shall make sure that the Home Secretary has heard it. Uh, I thank the Leader of the House for the uh, business statement. Uh, point of order, Dame Meg Hillier. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Madam Deputy Speaker, last week 